Hello students, our today's topic is head of the institution or department and his or her role. So dear students, let us start our today's discussion starting from the introduction. Leadership is an important element in directing functions of a group, an organization or management. Wherever there is an organized group of people working towards a common goal, some of leadership becomes essential. The power of leadership is the power of integrating. The leader stimulates what is best in a group, unites and concentrates scattering. A group leader provides a channel to the unutilized energy and creativity in the group. Administration should do their work very carefully. The appointment of the workers should be done according to the government. The selection, the appointments, the clarifications of their post, promotion of the working class is all included in staff. Physical education and sports personnel are selected and appointed on the basis of duly prescribed academic and professional qualifications. The management should not compromise on quality and qualification of candidates going under the process of start recruitment. Training is an important aspect of staff in physical education and sports. Without extensive and intensive in-service training, the selective staff cannot be efficient and effective. The supervisors can be very helpful to make the physical activity work the best when the physical staff come to know that the principal and the supervisor are helping them to solve their problems and remove their mistakes. The physical staff tell them their difficulties without their hesitation. For the development of physical staff, the principal will organize seminars, get-together, workshop, discussions, ancient organization, refresher courses, etc. Or they will give the teacher permission to go to different places. The supervision can make aware the new teaching methods, skills and teaching aids and can help to bring them in use. The head of the institution or department and his or her role. The head of institute is a leader in the field of education and physical education. The head of institute is very important in school and college. The head of institute can be called the central point. There are many responsibilities of a head of institute. He should have the ability to perform all those responsibilities. The progress and decline of the school or college depends upon the head of institutes. There are different descriptions on the various qualities, duties and abilities of the head of institute. While dealing with the people and staff, the head of the institute should be very careful and understanding. He should not let everyone feel as important as part of institute. Here are some points which should be remembered. Number one, he should keep the staff and student welfare at the utmost priority and understand the common and personal problems of the staff, students and parents. Number two, the head of the institute must provide the best working environment for all the level of staff, studying environments for all the students and should never neglect anybody. Number three, the head of the institute must inspire all the staff and students to give their best and emphasize on the staff cooperation because fraction and fighting among the staff will lead to indiscipline negligence and inefficiency. Number four, the head of the institute should deeply interest in maintaining discipline and decorum of the institute at any cost. Number five, he must regularly find time to supervise various programs and working of staff and students. Number six, 
the head of the institute must have desire and ability to deal with any people. He should always appreciate and compliment on any work or job done well. Number 7. The head of the institute should himself be a good example of discipline. He should be punctual, honest, hardworking, polite and understanding. Number 8. In case of any indiscipline, he should very strictly deal and take an immediate, impartial and appropriate decisions. Number 9. The head of the institute should also inspect the activities of game and sports. Physical education should be inspected in a special way so that his program can run smoothly. Attention should also be paid towards the counterpart activities of the students. Number 10. In case of teaching, he should teach something or the other subject in a school. He should choose such a subject in which he is an expert. In relation to teaching, he can come in contact with maximum students. Number 11. The main duty of a head of institute is the supervision of education work. In order to maintain a proper atmosphere in the school, it is very important for the head of institute to supervise the teaching work. He should be very impartial. He should not include any wrong feeling from the staff. He should inspect the staff impartially. Number 12. The responsibility of the management and inspection of the entire school lies on the head of the institute. He should pay attention towards all the activities of the school. There should not be any part of the school that does not come under the supervision of the head of the institute. Number 13. It is the duty of the head of the institute to take care of the school building. For this, the following things should be kept in mind. A. There should be provision of light in every room. B. There should be proper provision for pure fresh air to circulate in every room. C. There should be proper arrangement of furniture. Now number 14. The process of the student depends upon the syllabus. It is the duty of the head of the institute to make proper arrangement of the syllabus so that the aims and objectives of education can be achieved. Number 15. The head of institute should make the selection of the most important textbooks. While selecting the textbook, he should have faith that the book he is selecting is for the good of the students. Now number 16. The monthly, quarterly, half yearly and yearly exams should be conducted in a proper manner. This responsibility lies on the head of the institutes. Number 17. It is the duty of the head of the institute to inspect the registrars and accounts. For this, the head of institute should give the following things in mind. A. To inspect the income and expenditure. B. To inspect the salary register. C. Income amount has been deposited in proper time or not. Now number 18. If there is a hostel attached to the school, then hostel inspection is very essential. This duty should be done by the head of institutes from time to time. The facility for students, food and other arrangements should be paid special attention. Now here comes staff cooperation and its significance. Cooperation is important in networks where individuals exchange relevant information and resources in support of each other's goals rather than a shared goal. Something new may be achieved in a result, but it arises from the individual, not from a collective team effort. Well, cooperation in the workplace can make the difference between success and failure for many individuals. In a cooperation-rich workplace, individuals voluntarily engage in open communication. Management and lower-level employees work together and try to keep arguments to a minimum. 
workers are proactive in the sense that they try to prevent problems before they have a chance to occur. Cooperation is not always an easy thing to achieve in the workplace, but it is worth the effort because it leads to more harmonious and productive operation. Fighting and friction among the staff does not only create a bad impression on students and parents, but also spoil the total working environment of the institution which needs to be disciplined for the efficiency of the course. There might be some professional jealousy, but it should be avoided and should not hinder the work of the institution. Some administrations by the policy of divide and rule and promote groupies among the staff, which may be of immediate benefits for short term, but it is never good for the profession to get the best out of an organization. Cooperation of all level is the must. Cooperation among the staff of physical education department and also with other department which leads to joint ideas, proper planning, better understanding, efficient functioning and fruitfully truthful result. It will also inculcate discipline habits, good leadership and good moral qualities among the staff and students. Now here comes the conclusion of today's topic. Leadership is a dynamic process that caters to the needs of the members of the group. Further, it emerges in the interaction of individual with one another. Without right leadership, no home community, organizations, discipline, institution, professions, and finally not any nation can move on the path of progress. Leadership in physical education is very important so that he or she can lead and control the group of teams at play fields. A good leader can make his or her students understand psychologically regarding the complex on the playgrounds. Leaders are recognized in sports, schools and business every day. Not all of these leaders are managers. Some are members of management, but other are employees who lead through example for co-workers. It does not take a specific title to be a leader. Instead, there are skills leaders who want others to perform at a right level when either working with them or for them. Leaders improve the performance of everyone around them. Effective Staff management is essential to ensuring your workplace runs smoothly and efficiently and that the right employees are in the right positions. Employees who are well managed and received continuing training and evaluation are better prepared to do their job and to serve their institutes to the best. This can lead to better profits, more satisfied for doing their work. On the other hand, poor staff can result in a chaotic, unorganized work environment, which has the potential to make your institutes lose valuable business. The staff controls all recruitment and personal needs of the institutes. The main purpose of staff is to hire the right people for the right job to achieve the objectives of the institutes. Staff involves more than just recruitment, staffing also encompasses training and development, performance appraisal, promotions and transfers. Without the staffing function, the institutes would fail because the organization would not be properly staffed to meet in goals. This much for today. Thank you so much.